form state list. We've got two web servers, two subnets. Oh, it's the same as what we made a minute ago. So. Got all the stuff in it so we connect it. Let's reset the lab. Right, you need to append the following resource block to configure instances to serve a custom website will echo back the instance ID. This one at the end, AWS Instance Web, Far Count, AMI IDs, UserData.sh. This configuration uses user data to bootstrap instances to serve a custom website. The file built in Interpolation function reads contents of the file into a string. This keeps the resource block clean while keeping the bootstrapping command for a separate file. So we need to create the user data script uh, that will create and serve the custom website. So let's exit userdata.sh. Shebang. It's a trip. It's a trip. It's got a fun to be. Gets our instance ID. Every starting time I go to type a dollar, it like taps down to the cloud show. <laughs> That's our user script. The script will create a file called index.php uh, in the default location serving directory of the Apache web server. 
code will get the instance ID from the metadata, echoes it back to the user. We run the execution plan. is required. The plan will tell you that it must destroy and then recreate replacement instances. This is because user data must be executed when the instance is first launched. Many changes to the instance config don't require recreation. Terraform will notify you of an update in place in the execution plan when recreation isn't required. The operation should complete in under a minute. So in this step we have used the EC2 instance user data bootstrap instance to serve a custom website modifying the user data argument. So that's that. Just take you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven says. Hey, Mike, hey, everyone. Waving Hello. here. What are you up to? I'm doing some Terraform labs um, it's for the exam preparation course. I'm taking my exam on Thursday, so I'm refreshing my theory. <laughs> What exam? AWS certification? Uh, Terraform Associate. Noise. It's this bad boy. Masek says. Web link. Yeah, I've already done some practice exams and I've passed them, so this is uh, just, just like a free Just say one, two, three, four, got. five, six, seven says. Lots of people use Terraform nowadays. It's a very sought after skill. Yeah, yeah. This I, I'm using it a lot more in my day job. So, um, yeah, when when we write code, we'll have to write the code that creates the infrastructure that code sits on as well. Um, so yeah, it's been pretty interesting getting up to speed with that. Um, but yeah, no, from what, what I've used of it so far, it's really powerful. Right? It's quite nice having, like when you deploy something, it's gonna always spin up the same thing every time. Like that's such a valuable thing to have. And you just bake it into a pipeline. So like, as soon as you get a push to main, that pipeline does all the deployment. Like you don't have to fart around with it yourself doing like a manual deploy. If you want like an exact duplicate of prod, you just spin up an exact duplicate of prod using like the prod um, like config, tweak it slightly to make it dev friendly and you've got a, a duplicate ready to play. Just waiting for this to spin up. Da, 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 da. I guess we can start this actually. So You'll see now that you have two instances serving a custom website. The instances are running in private subnets in different availability zones and are assigned to a default security group for the VPC that allows all traffic. 
Um, we need a few resources created that will allow an elastic load balancer to securely distribute traffic between these two instances. Public subnets for each availability zone must be created so that the load balancer can be accessed from the internet. This requires additional resources such as an internet gateway to connect to the internet and route tables that route the internet. Security group that allows the traffic from the internet. And we need a security group that allows traffic from the elastic load balancer in the public subnets to the instance in the private subnet. Uh, you will make use of separate configuration files to make the configuration more manageable. So let's do nano networking.tf might help if I spell it correctly net working I'm kind of done with search burned out slash tilt but I am eager to learn <laughs> a new skill though I'm still waiting on my salary before I can do anything and wait for Black Friday causes pricey currently around 1k both courses together we'll see what the future holds lol <laughs> what what are you doing at the moment? What are your courses? But yeah, I feel you with the burnout. I tried doing my AWS security um, specialist exam and I completely screwed the pooch. I think I, I failed it, but only by like six points, which is really annoying. <laughs> but yeah, I can retake it at some point. But uh, I, I went in with like no preparation. So like I didn't didn't revise, just YOLO'd it, and um, yeah, to to just come within a, a, a hair's breadth of, of passing was quite frustrating, but <laughs> it's what it is. You can always retake it. YOLO try, YOLO yeah. result. Yeah, exactly. Just say. It's good though because it does tell you like what areas you needed to focus on, so um, so yeah, so I can use that exam fail to um, put a bit more effort into revising my my weaker areas. This is quite a beast file, actually. Let's um, use this. Right, so what are we doing? So read through the config and get an understanding of how to configure each resource. So... That's good. Are... Waiting for the Christmas market to open up so I can walk around downtown and enjoy the nice holiday specialties. <laughs> I'm quite looking forward to our Christmas markets. We get like a German theme market in the center of the town. And um, there's like a bar that they open. It's like a, they put like a fake log cabin in the center of town. Um, and it just serves like beer and like it's German themed so they get people with the like hundreds of glasses stacked up and stuff and there, there used to be like a moose's head on the outside of it and it would talk so it would be like a talking moose um, and it would sing like christmas songs but th they got rid of that unfortunately but yeah the moose was the best bit <laughs> all right so we have a resource for an internet gateway called web Internet Gateway or IGW, which just gets the VPC ID. And we're creating a root table within the VPC with a cider block of anything. And that links to the gateway. We've got public subnet root we table. We have something very similar to, but we have like lots of small cabins made from wood and each sells something different and usually really good food. You would get fat the entire month, Cal. <laughs> yeah, that's what we've got essentially. Lots of little sheds with food in it. Um, there is one Morning. that does like a Yorkshire pudding. My topics pudding. will sidetrack you all. <laughs> yeah, you can get like a, a Yorkshire pudding cone 
with like a dinner inside it. It's it's pretty OP. <laughs> Yeah, so not a waffle cone, a Yorkshire pudding cone, and it's just so good. Alright, and then we're creating the two subnets that we had before, so that's nothing new. And we've got a root table association with the public subnet. That's just linking to that and linking to the root table, okay. So the availability zones are the ones stored in the availability zone, which we already saw. It should be there still. Yeah. Cool. And Terraform apply the networking uh, state. So we are going to refresh these two. Getting a new gateway, a new root table, a new subnet like roots, and then the subnets are going to get made again. And say yes. This command should complete in under a minute, and then we're going to create a security group that will secure the traffic. Oh, it's already made it. Alright, so we do copy this. Um, so yeah, so we're making a security group. This will allow incoming HTTP traffic from the internet from anywhere or 18 pretty much everything i buy is new interesting and really good this is going on for a few years now since the city hall are literally triaging the sellers now and are challenging them to come up with novel stuff totally worth it cause <laughs> before they would all have pretty much the same products and it was really lame now it's actually nice and it makes you feel good to be there yeah I think we've got ads about to start, so uh, I need to actually get um, uh, the bot should have like an ad detection. So hit me. Where is this data class? Give me the Mads Kappa. <laughs> no, you should have them already. It's just come up with the warning saying that it's about to start. So if you haven't got them, you've either got Turbo or something, <laughs> or an ad blocker. I'm special. <laughs> but yeah, there's this, this new ad schedule thing has been added. So we'll know when the next ad will roll. Notice that I don't get ads since I use a VPN. <laughs> Just saying. Just saying. Nice. But I don't know if this ad schedule actually shows you like... There we go. The ad break in progress has just started. So it'll go on for two minutes. Msek says, at break in progress, one minute, 50 seconds. But yeah, so the event sub. Just Stakey one, two, three, four, five, six, seven says, I'm not the right person to talk to about ads. Called when the user runs a mid-roll commercial break. Either. Yeah, this is what we want. I wanted to change this so that the we added this one, so I need to add this one. So the I haven't the, seen an ad in ages. Uh, 
and I do watch Twitch. <laughs> I still get ads, and I've got ad blocker installed. What is it fucking called? Just get a VPN. Notification channel ad break begin. Thank me later. Theo says, Yo, Yo I'm sick. I'm sick. This username in the Texas says, how do design patterns impact application scalability and maintainability in OOP, and what trade-offs must developers weigh when addressing concurrency and optimizing code reusability? Theo says, Yeah, that. Just wanted to say hi. Right quick. Working and lurking. <laughs> Hate that sound. Just Aggy one two three four five six seven says, "What was that?" Lol. This username in the Texas says, "B eight Sol Zelda he." Channel ad break begin later. Have they not added the event for it? Subscribe channel, donate, raid, cheer, subscribe, follow, message hold, message update, setting update, term update, auto reward, ban, follow, goal, hype train. Oh, prediction, shield, stream. Yeah, there isn't one. How have they not done that yet? Guessing that's coming in a future update then. Added ad schedule. They added charity recently, so that
Yeah, added support for charity donation events. This is the latest version, they've only just added unban requests. Oh, we've got VIPs on there now. That's good. Um, VIP used to be a pub sub only, so I can get rid of that now. implement my own then because it'd be nice to get that event um, schedule or the ad break schedule we we'll just do that and get the, get the schedule on next ad uh, It'll tell you when the next ad will roll, it will be none if the streamer does not schedule ads or is not live. So at least that gives me like a countdown which I can then trigger something. Alright, anyway, um, back to lab. So we have some new security groups. Just Seggy one two three four five six seven says. I think you need regular users to confirm these things. Me and ads don't really intersect, with or without sub. Dick. Translated <laughs> from Dutch. No, I just want. So I, I've seen it on um, Thor's channel. So when ads roll, he'll put like a like a warning on the bottom to say that ads are rolling and then he stops streaming to let those people that are sitting through an ad break come back to his stream following the ad um, so they don't miss out on the content that you would have done while the ad was running. It's just quite nice to have that notification because on the default Twitch panel it just pops up with like a green thing yeah, saying he's always doing that. It's really nice of him. Yeah, but yeah. So if I miss that little pop up that says the ad started, I've got no no way of knowing. Um, but yeah, it'd be nice just to have it like fire something up on the screen or a sound or something to just say, "Hey, the ads are running." I can pop something into the chat as well. I can get it to say, "Yeah, we're running an ad." Right, so that created my egress rules and my ingress rules. Uh, remove the current interface config from main TF. This will allow you to modify the configuration and attach the web server security group to them. We append the following resources to the block. So we're just doing lookup, RID, we're getting getting the subnets again. The only difference from the previous config was the addition of the VPC security group IDs. That one. So 
So it's going to refresh these two in place, it's going to add the VPC group IDs. So this lab step we've created two additional configuration files to manage network and security resources. Uh, public subnets will house the elastic load balancer that we'll create in the next lab step. Public subnet security groups allow the HTTP traffic from the internet and the private subnet security group allows traffic from the ELB subnet security group. We have step five. Uh, now that we've completed the private tier of the website, we'll need to create the public subnets and the security group for ELB. And we're gonna complete the scenario by adding a cross zone ELB to distribute traffic. Uh, ELB is public facing by or internet facing by default. You can create the internal ELB by adding internal argument and setting it to true. What is this song? It's terrible. <laughs> Internal. If true, the ELB will be an internal ELB. save the DNS address of the ELB as the website address. So that's going to create the load balancer, connect it up to those two. And 
we get the IPs outputted and the site address that I just added. If we send a HTTP request to the ELB every two seconds using watch and curl, Specified. Oh, wait, I haven't, uh, Done the terraform output. That's probably helpful. <laughs> there we go. Right, let's check that we've created the load balancer. We know it works because that curl was hitting two two different endpoints. Uh, right now, we're going to use the destroy command to delete any resources that we no longer want. If we delete the security group. Using destroy. I'm going to destroy target equals AWS security group LB SG. Gonna delete all these. To destroy the target resource, all resources that depend on that target must also be destroyed. You can see the security group highlighted on the below dependency graph. So all resources above the group are the ones that are to be destroyed. Well, that's quite cool. So it actually deletes like a load of stuff, even if they're used for other things. Because WebSG is dependent on ELBSG. And everything else is dependent on that, so it gets rid of it. Nerdy Biker says, Uteriform backslash O slash. Yeah. I'm just running through some labs um, to prep for the exam set, or the cert exam. Get my words out. So now if we run the plan command, verify that the destroying resources won't affect the desired config. 
Ah nice! I should go for those exams one day! Do it! I think this one is um, fairly easy to be honest. Msek says, web link. So our plan is showing that it will have to recreate that, recreate that, recreate that, recreate that, and recreate that because we've destroyed them all. If we want to destroy all the other resources managed by Terraform, we can just do Terraform destroy all really. Without a target, and it will have to get rid of everything else. Um, make sure that you destroy all resources, and then we've got a validation check to make sure that we have, so... resources deleted, we can start the check. Okay, all right, that's succeeded. 